Hey guys, what is up? Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, you guys already read the title, you know what it is. We're gonna be talking about what I did to make my YouTube videos better. So if you guys have been here from the very beginning, hey guys and welcome back to my channel. Right now, I wanna talk to you about why you don't need to have the best equipment in the world to just get started. First, I just have to say thank you so much for sticking with me, following me along in this journey, and for dealing with those shaky videos because I can barely go back and watch my old videos. They are so, so rough. But the second thing is, I'm really hoping that you guys notice with every video or at least every couple of months, my videos really start to improve. And I know that if I go back to my videos even just from six months ago, my technique and just the way that I create my YouTube videos has really changed. So in this video in particular, I want to share some of my sneaky tricks, strategies, and things that I think about when I'm creating my YouTube videos to make them that much better. And I want to let you guys in on a little secret. I didn't study videography. I knew nothing about filming a video, editing a video, telling a story within a video. I mean, I knew nothing before I got started with my YouTube channel. So everything really just picked up along the way from either video tutorials on YouTube or just watching YouTube creators that I like and figuring out what I actually enjoy on YouTube and what I kind of want to put within my YouTube videos as well. So the very first First thing that I feel like you guys want to know is the gear that I use because a lot of people think that the quality of a YouTube video comes down to the gear and it is so so much more than that and I'm gonna share that within this video but the first thing you guys need to know is the camera that I am currently using I first got started with a Nikon 1J4 and it just wasn't great for videos at all there was no flip out screen so I couldn't see myself the autofocus was just crappy so I wouldn't ever recommend that camera to you guys but now I am currently using a Canon EOS M50 and I do absolutely love this camera I've got a screen over over here on the right hand side so I can see myself and it's just great. It's a really good camera. The other thing that I did in terms of my gear to take my videos up a notch, I now have studio lights. Before I was just using these two windows that you see right here. I was using them for natural light so it all depended on the weather when I could film a YouTube video but now I have two studio lights that I use for all of my YouTube videos as well as I have shared this in my videos before. I lay blankets and cushions and pillows and stuff down on the ground to capture the sound. When I first got started with my channel I didn't realize that this this room was so echoey and my audio was just absolutely terrible. So if you are looking to improve your audio and you can't afford a mic right now, I should have said this guys, I do not have an external mic. I am just using the mic that is built in with my camera. But if you guys want to take your audio to the next level, remove a little bit of echo, laying blankets and cushions on the ground, it just helps to absorb the sound and it will definitely improve your audio. Some other very simple, just cosmetic things that I did within my YouTube videos. I used to not really care what I looked like. I would just show up, film, whether I had my makeup done, my hair done or not. Now, don't get me wrong. There's nothing wrong with looking like this on a day-to-day -day basis on my Instagram stories. This is how you guys see me. But would you rather watch a video where someone looks a little bit disheveled or a little bit more put together. Really, this only took me 20 minutes to do my hair, makeup, change my outfit, and I feel like I am good to go and ready to film a YouTube video. You guys also know that I painted my office and that was huge for me. My office before was tan and it was still a neutral tone, which was pretty good, but the background of your YouTube videos, it does kind of determine the color quality that you get within your camera. And every time that I was switching from my living room to my office, I would have to adjust the color tone within my camera and it was just a pain in the butt, the color correction was hard, and I just wanted more of a cool toned office so that when I was filming my YouTube videos, my color correction was so, so much easier. And your background is so, so important. You guys may notice that in all of my YouTube videos, my background is pretty tidy. I would never just leave this charger here, miscellaneous things on my desk. I don't do that. And honestly, the easiest thing, and this is probably not the best thing that I do, but if I just have miscellaneous stuff on my desk and I don't want them seen in the shot, I will take them and I will put them on the ground. Also, you guys may notice that there's a little bit of a mess here. All I can do is pull my chair in, eh, maybe a little bit more, and it's gone. You don't even see it. Or if you more so like the look of an actual backdrop and you can't afford a backdrop right now, something that I used to do in college when I was doing photo shoots, if you get a flat sheet, iron it so it looks really, really nice. You can hang it pretty tight, either using thumbtacks or something like with your wall. And boom got yourself a backdrop. And then as an extra little tip, you could be really, really close to your background if you want it kind of all in focus. What I would recommend is move a little bit closer to your camera so that the background gets a little blurry. See how blurry that is? Now, before we get to the next tip, I could really go for a matcha. Man. 
best tip that I can give you guys when it comes to improving your YouTube videos is learning how to tell a story. And this is something that I really, really struggled with from the beginning. I wanted my YouTube videos to kind of be tutorials, which in a tutorial, I feel like the story tells itself, but I also just wanted them to be more so in blogging format where it was like, here's three tips or here's five things to do. And it didn't flow together at all. There was no story and it didn't keep people engaged. So there's some things that I've definitely learned over time to better tell a story as well as just create better videos in general. Do I want the camera over here now? We jump, we haven't done this angle. Okay, we'll do this angle. The uh, very first thing we have to talk about is creating a plan for your YouTube videos. I have no idea why I wasn't doing this from the beginning, but I remember for every video, I would come up with a topic. I would sit down on my desk and I would just talk for about five to 15 minutes. And that would be my YouTube video. Now you guys already know I have a journal right here just for my YouTube videos. And I write down not everything that I'm going to say in a video. Like I don't fully script my videos. I just give myself main bullet points, what I want to talk about when I want to talk about them, as well as where I want to talk about them because this is a huge, huge tip for you guys. If you're watching your YouTube videos and you think that they're boring or they're just not that interesting, one easy thing that you can do to improve your YouTube videos is to take different shots. And you guys have obviously already noticed in this video, I have moved around a lot in my office and even the last scene that I did where I was making myself this matcha, I did that for a reason. One of the factors that the YouTube algorithm pays attention to is your audience retention rate. And I've already mentioned this in several of my videos in the past, but the longer you keep people watching your YouTube videos, the better. And I really do think that it comes down to two things. It comes down to the way that you are filming as well as the way that you are editing. So when it comes down to filming, I already mentioned, I do get different shots. I get different scenes. When I was first getting started with YouTube, I would only sit in one spot. When I wanted to have a transition or a little bit of a break within the video, I would just do a sliding effect that came with an iMovie. I would do a golf hit sound and that was my transition. But I just realized that that was so amateur. So one of the things that I really like to do, I like to get different shots I like to jump around because I think it does add interest as well as it's a good way to break up your video but like I said I showed you guys where I was making my matcha and I included that little segment in this video for a reason it helps to set the scene now I obviously do not have a vlogging channel I can't really offer you guys that many tips when it comes to vlogging but if I include a little bit of b-roll you guys engage with it really really well and I think that's because and this is the main reason why I do it I'm bringing you guys behind the scenes into my world so then you feel like you're getting ready for the video so if I have have a matcha in the video instead of just sitting down and saying hey guys what's up welcome back to my channel I've got a matcha I'm ready for this video I will actually bring you behind the scenes and I will show you me making the matcha so then I don't have to explain to you guys that I have a matcha if that makes any sense and I've done this with going to Glen Edith or going shopping and just miscellaneous stuff I've included that within my videos because I'd rather show you guys what I'm doing instead of telling you guys what I'm doing now I do have a couple of tips that I want to give to you guys when it comes to creating vlog like style videos or even just that little bit of b-roll that I like to include within my videos. The very first thing is if you are holding your camera and you realize that your hand is a little shaky, one simple thing that you can do, you can change your position so that you have your arm, my arm is resting on something, and then I realize that I can hold my camera a lot, a lot easier. Otherwise, it's a lot of strain on your shoulder, and if your arms are not that strong, a camera can be pretty heavy. Tip number two, make sure that you are paying attention to your lighting. If you are vlogging yourself, one of the easiest things you can do is face towards a window. The natural light is all you need. You do not need to set up studio lights every time, but something that I did when I was actually filming that matcha scene, the lighting was absolutely terrible. So what I had to do, I ended up pulling my studio lights into my kitchen so that I could get the shot. Tip number three is to get all different angles. Move your camera around a lot and don't be afraid to film the same scene over and over and over again. If you guys ever notice within TV shows, for all the different camera angles that they have to get, they have to refilm the scene. And that's the exact way that I look at it when I am vlogging something. I don't want my camera in just one spot. I want to get every angle and I want to walk you step by step through the process of what I'm doing. And the next tip, tip number four is do not get stuck with just holding your camera. Like I'm obviously holding my camera right now. Feel free, I don't have a good spot to set this down. Feel free to mix it up from handheld shots as well as sitting down like camera on a tripod or camera on something else. Get different shots in that sense. And then the fifth and final tip that I have for you guys is do not be afraid to overfilm, especially if you are vlogging your day and you're not sure what you want to include in the video. Get a thousand shots, anything that seems interesting to you, get it and you can always cut it out when you are editing. And of course, I can't end this video without talking about editing. So I do have another video on my channel sharing how I edit my YouTube videos. So if you guys want to check 
check that out. I will include it right here as well as in the description bar down below, but I do use iMovie for my videos and I used to think that it was really limiting and that I didn't have as many options as let's say like Final Cut Pro or another advanced editing software, but I've really learned to work with iMovie and do some pretty cool features within my YouTube videos. So some things that I think you guys need to pay attention to if you're trying to improve your videos. First and foremost, try to incorporate different overlays. So like I already said, try to get different scenes, try to jump around a little bit because that's gonna add interest in your filming stage. But when you're editing, if you feel like maybe you're sitting in one spot too long or it gets a little boring, try to add overlays that are going to enhance what you are saying. So whenever I say the number of subscribers that I have, you guys may notice that I always pop up something on the screen. It just kind of validates what I am saying as well as it makes it a little bit more interesting. Do not use the corny transitions that are available within iMovie. That's just a big mistake that I did for so long. And when it comes to text, iMovie's text, again, they don't have that great of options. You can actually design something either in Photoshop or if you use Canva and you can download it with a transparent background and then add it to your YouTube videos that way. But with your YouTube videos, if you realize that you're watching it and even you are getting bored, then you really need to do something to make your videos more interesting. So that is it with this YouTube video. I'm really hoping you guys liked it. I'm not sure if you guys noticed, but in the last two videos, I tried to do something different and I'm actually going through the flow of the video as I am shooting it. So I will shoot some clips. I will upload it to iMovie and I'll just see if I like it, if I like the flow and then what I want to say next. So I'm not sure if you guys are noticing a difference. I like filming them this way. I think that my videos are a bit more thought out when I am doing it this way. But the one thing I will notice is that I have been filming for four or five hours at this point. So it has been a long, long time, but I'm really hoping that you guys like this video. If you did, make sure you get a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel down below. I definitely have more tips in terms of improving your videos with like lighting and background and maybe even like settings on your camera. So if you guys wanna see another video like this, just strict tips on how to improve your videos, let me know in the comment section down below and I can create that for you guys. But otherwise, I'm out of here. Bye guys. Why did, I, this was weird. My like pinky did something weird. Okay, bye. This camera quality though, I don't think anyone should be that close to my eye or my eyebrow. I'm not just. The longer that people, do I want to fix it? Not worth it, okay. It's not good, it's not good. Oh, my battery's dying. Dang it. I look up. No, see, I don't want to, okay. <laughs> I can't look at myself, seriously. Oh, my hair, no. No. Oh, see, now I lost it. People swallow, but they don't fall down. Crushed it.